Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you everything you need to download and set up and write C++ programs using NetBeans and the MinGW GCC compiler. So to get started here, we're going to need a compiler. We're going to be using msys2 and I will put all these links down in the description below. You're going to go to msys2.org and you're going to download the first link here, the x86-64. All of this is going to be for a 64-bit setup, so if you don't have a 64-bit processor, this isn't going to work. But most of the world is running on 64-bit now, so I'm not going to address anything with 32-bit. Just click on that and save that file. And I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but once you have that downloaded, we're going to install it. And you should see a window like this and I recommend just sticking with the default pathway. If you do change the pathway, you'll just have to remember that throughout the rest of the setup. So I'm going to leave it at default and just click next and let it install. And once that's finished, go ahead and let it run. <clears throat> and when this opens up, we're going to have to type some things. I will also put the things you need to type down in the description below so you can just copy and paste those into here. But the first thing we need to do is update. So to do that, you're going to type pacman dash capital S Y U U. And let that run. And when you get this prompt here, just click yes. And once it's finished installing everything, you're going to close this out and it will give you a little message there and then we're going to run it again. So you'll want to locate msys2, which should be on the C drive there, open that folder and then run msys2.exe. Now that we've got our window opened back up again, we're going to type that same thing in a second time. We're going to keep typing that in until it says there are no more updates. And hit yes. All right, once that's finished, go ahead and close it out again. And then open it again. And we'll run it one more time. At this point, it should be finished. And after there is nothing else to update, we're going to type pacman dash capital S base devil. Again, I recommend copying this from below. And just hit enter and yes. And now that that's finished, we're going to install the tool chain. So just copy and paste this line in there and run that. Again, we're going to hit enter and yes. And once this finishes, we will have our MinGW compiler. All right, and once that's complete, we're ready to move on. The first thing you need to do, if you don't already have it, is download and install the JDK, the Java Development Kit. You can find that. Uh, I've got the link posted down below, but we're looking for the Windows X64 installer. So download that. Um, go ahead and agree to everything. Oracle has gone back and forth with making you create an account to download this. So if you do have to create an account, go ahead. Um, but we're going to download the JDK, the latest version, save that, and then run the installer. Again, I recommend putting everything in the default directories. And then once that's finished, we're going to need to download NetBeans. So I'm going to be using Apache NetBeans 11.3 because that's the latest and greatest. 
Um, and I recommend you get whatever is the latest and greatest whenever you're watching this video. So again, we're looking for the 64-bit Windows installer. And you can just click any link here and save that, and then we'll run that. After the download's complete, run the installer here. And I wouldn't bother with customizing anything, just click Next, Accept, Default Directories, check for updates. And once it's done, just click Finish. And before we set up NetBeans to work with C++, we need to update the system path so NetBeans knows where to find our compiler. To update the path, just click on your start icon down there and type path. And then you want to click on edit the system environment variables. And then click environment variables. And you've got two windows here. This says path up here. This is not the one you want. You want the one that is in the lower window. So double click on that. And yours may look a lot different than mine depending on what all you have installed. But the important thing is we want to add three things to our system path. So click new, click browse, and then navigate to your MSYS folder and then into MinGW64, bin, and then click OK, and then click New, browse again, navigate to the MSYS folder, go down to USR, and bin, click OK. And then the last one, this one may not be necessary, but it also may prevent some unforeseen problems in the future. We're going to do one more. Browse. And we're going to add the Java JDK. So that will be in Program Files, Java, and then whichever version of the JDK you installed, bin. Click OK. And we want to move all three of these up to the top. So just click move up on each one until you have these three at the top of your path. And then it's important to click OK on all of these, otherwise it will not save your changes. Alright, now that we've got the path set up, we can go ahead and run NetBeans. And I will show you how to configure that for C++. And once that opens, click on Tools, and then click on Plugins. And then the first thing you want to do is check for updates. And once that's finished, click on Settings. And then click on this box that says NetBeans 8.2 Plugin Portal. If you're using a newer version of NetBeans than 11.3, you may not have to do this. But we want to get access to the C++ plugin. So click on that. And then click on Available Plugins. And click on Check for Newest. And then you should see the C++ plugin available here. So click on that and then click on install. Accept and install. Click continue. Click finish. And then once that's done, click on updates. Make sure everything is up to date here. Check for updates again. And then update. And the IDE should restart. Once NetBeans has rebooted, you can verify that your C++ is configured properly by clicking on Tools and then click on Options. 
and then click on C++ and it's going to try to find our compiler. If we have done everything correctly, this should all populate automatically. Make sure you have all of these but the last two. We don't need those. If all of this fills in correctly, you've done everything right. If it does not, if these are all blank, uh, you need to go back and check your path. Make sure the path was set correctly. Um, if that doesn't work, you need to reinstall msys and rerun the pacman commands and, and try again. Sometimes that can go bad. Uh, but normally, normally this auto populates and everything is fine. So to verify that, just click OK. Then we can come up here and create a new project. Click on the gold folder. Click on C++. Click on C++ application. Click Next. Here you can set the name, uh, the project location, folder, etc. You can also set the version of C++ you're working with. I recommend going with 14. And then click Finish. And then you can expand the source files tab over here. Double click on main. And it's going to give you a startup file. I'm going to clear out the comments. And I'm going to change CSTD lib to IOStream. And then I'm going to run hello world. So. You can click on this green arrow to run the program. You should see Hello World down here. The built-in console is great for Java and it's great for output in C++, but if you're wanting to get input uh, like CN statements or get line statements, you're going to want to switch this to the Windows console. And to do that, you can right-click on your project, go down to Properties, Go to Run, and then where it says Internal Terminal here, you want to change that to External Terminal, and click OK. And then when you run the program, it should run in the standard Windows console, and that will allow you to use CN statements and GitLine statements. Another really cool thing about NetBeans, if you don't like the light theme, uh, the default colors here, you can change that pretty easily. You can go up to Tools, go to Options, and feel free to explore all of these. But the easiest way to change it is to go to Appearance, and then click on this Look and Feel tab. The default is going to be Windows, but if you want something darker, you might try Dark Nimbus. Uh, I personally like the uh, Flat Laugh Dark. So you can apply that. And it's going to have to restart, but it will come back with a dark theme. All right, now that I'm back with my dark theme, I'll show you a few other things you can do with NetBeans. There is a built-in IntelliSense, so it's a little bit different than Visual Studio, but it does work out pretty well. Type in CN, and then I hit dot. It's going to show me some available options there. If I typed some things that didn't make sense and the IntelliSense went away, and you you backed up. If you want to force it to show up again, you can hold down control and hit space, and that will bring the IntelliSense back up for you. Another cool feature about NetBeans, if you're typing in a function and you don't remember what the arguments are for that function, so I'm going to type in demo up here, and then let's say I'm trying to call demo, but I don't remember what the data types are. I can hold down control and press P, and it's going to show a little tooltip here that says it is expecting an int and a char and that's based on whatever that function accepts. So those are two hot keys that I really like. The control space uh, for pulling up IntelliSense or autocomplete and then control P if you're trying to call a function and you can't remember what the data types are. And one other nice thing about NetBeans, let's say uh, my code got really ugly and just say it was all spread out. Sometimes this happens. If you want to fix that, you can right click and hit format, and it's going to straighten everything out for you. And that's it. Good luck with your programming in C.